whenever I meet other people named Hunter or other people with disabilities, I, I get really, I can only describe it as territorial almost. I have these two, these thoughts that are like guttural. And then there's a second part of you that looks at that guttural feeling that you have and goes, why the fuck am I feeling like this? Hello? Hey, what's up? Hi there. Who's this? This is um, Hunter, Hunter S. Hunter S. Thompson, Fear and Loathing the in Las of... Vegas. Is that Hunter? Is that Hunter S. Thompson, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? That's him, right? Yes, I believe that is him. Well, uh, I can only assume I got part of my name from there, but you never, you never know. It was him, Hunter, but now it is you. What's going on, man? How can I uh, get you today? What's what's happening? Well, um, I guess for all the for all the viewers out there, um, my name is Hunter. I have a multitude of disabilities, and for some reason, um, I, I generally like to see myself as a more chill person, but whenever I meet other people named Hunter or other people with disabilities, I, I get really, I can only describe it as um, territorial almost. Yeah, man, it says, uh, it says I get weirdly territorial when I meet other disabled folks or other people named Hunter. You, now, you said territorial is the only way to describe this. How would you describe least, this feeling? I almost, I, I, I guess a part of it almost, you know, just because I'm, I, you know, I moved around uh, military-wise. I'm so used to being like, almost like one of a kind, almost. Now, mm. I think like a weird, a weird part of me just has kind of like, just, kind of neat to on one hand to see oh i'm not the only one out here with any particular thing but at the same time another part of me almost feels like well now i'm not special anymore and that almost mm. almost kind of bums me out a little bit mm. when you were growing well, up like, like... Never... go ahead i was gonna say never never had a real problem with any any of any of one i just thought it was just a weird thing that i'd hope we I don't know, like to hear input on of any sort. Um, growing up, I never really had this issue. I didn't notice this until I more so graduated high school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How old are you now? Twenty-five. Cool. So, um, growing up, like, okay, so growing up, what, like, did you was be was like the identity of being disabled like I important to you? No. Oh, it was um. For the most part, like, I barely noticed it growing up. It didn't become more noticeable until I got older. Okay. Can I ask, and you don't have to tell me shit, but, um, what, what, what is your disability? I have cerebral palsy, scoliosis, and then my doctor says I might have a little bit of arthritis in my back, so I gotta get checked up for that at some point as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, like, nowadays, like, you would, would you consider... Your disability, like, I would you consider it a, a a big part of who you are, or how you define yourself, or your personality, oh, yes. or anything like uh, that? One hundred percent. I think mean, because it's at the point where I can actually notice how it affects everything, and just how over time this changes what I've done and how I do things. Why do you think that when you were a kid you barely noticed it, but now at twenty five it's like a, a cornerstone of who you are? Um. Well, I guess because as a kid, you know, you you just you have a lot of energy. You use it, but of mm. course, I I always um, instead of using it to take care of myself, I'd read, just went off and did whatever made me happy. And I can only imagine now a lot of that's just catching up with me. Hmm. Um. Now, do you have like uh, like how else? I mean, aside from being disabled, like how else do you? define yourself what else is important in your identity well identity wise i i think it's important um i guess i mentioned i'm on the more uh quiet side initially but i do tend to open up as long as someone else starts the conversation sure uh, i generally try to be on the more friendly side of things which is why i find my weird um I guess my weird feelings of meeting other people with similar ailments to be just baffling to me. Hmm. So but this is a I thing. Never, I never have the issue with the person as a whole, like as an individual. It's just like, 
I, I can only explain it as like, oh, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm the, this is, this is the space I've occupied for so long. You're, yeah, you're yeah. in my space. Yeah. But again, so I, this don't, is... I don't have a problem with them ever normally. Mm -hmm. This is one of those, I have these two, these, these thoughts that you have or feelings you have that are like guttural. And then there's a second part of you deeper in your brain that looks at that feeling, that guttural feeling that you have and goes, why the fuck am I feeling like this? Oh, exactly. No, and on one hand, I find it funny because it's like of, of, of all the things to like have happened every time I meet someone similar, it's like, this is what I think and not like, oh, cool, I got to meet someone else. Right. So it's my first thought of, hey, this is this is my turf. Are you coming after my friends? No one can't have that. Right. No, sir. Right, right, right. I feel like there's a way... You know, yeah, I have I have that too, where like you're talking to someone and you're thinking something and you're like, why the fuck did I think that I should, <laughs> you know, what, where's that coming from? You know, like I, I, but there's, I think there's a, there's a power in that self-awareness that you can use, right? Like, cause you can, theoretically you can, to some degree, I think, train your brain to not feel certain I don't know I I actually this is something I have thought about a while like can you train your brain against these certain guttural feelings uh you can try you can definitely like have be be mindful of it and every time you you're talking to another disabled person and something in your brain goes like hey I'm the only motherfucker with cerebral palsy on this block all right this person's on my turf you got to you look at that thought and you're like you know, you understand that you do not desire for that to be in the in the lexicon of your brain, and you and you take it and you put it away. You know, right? I think I think for me too. At least I'm I'm aware enough to where at least in my friend group, like I'm con constantly joking about my own my own ailments. I'm very um self deprivation wise in my in my humor. Love it. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so it's, it's enough to where it's like, I, I know this isn't really a problem. Um, but yeah, no, that, that's, it is just interesting to think. Um, definitely think I can definitely train myself to not go, go to that right away. Okay. I got to ask you this. I get it. I get where you're coming from with the cerebral, but with like the, um, you know, being territorial about disabilities. I get, I understand kind of why you might be having those thoughts, but I have, I have no idea why you're territorial about other people named Hunter. Um, I don't know. I think part of that just comes to at least growing up. Like I was, um, finding at least all the places I've lived, finding someone named Hunter was a rare thing. And mm -hmm. now it's becoming more common. And the more, the more often I hear someone else being called, that's not me, the more like weird and confused. It just, I just get confused. And you part, know, of the part of that, I think, yeah. also comes back to like, oh, see, I'm not, I'm not as special as I used to be. Mm -hmm. You know what, Hunter? Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, every time, you, now that I'm thinking about it, in the two or three times in my life I've ever met another Lyle, there is a little part of my brain that goes like, ah, fuck this guy. Right, and I wonder, I wonder how much of that comes to um, when I was a kid. There was another person in my kindergarten class named Hunter S. And from what I remember, just didn't like him. You must have wanted to kill uh, him. I thought he was loud and obnoxious. It's like, I just, ah. Uh. And I wonder yeah. how much of my like subconscious mind associates other people with that specific Hunter, despite, you know, everyone being so different. That's like, oh, this is a far cry from who they used to be when they were in kindergarten. I doubt this person named Hunter I'm talking to is that. Hmm. And now let me ask you this: Has um, this ter this territorial thing that goes it just goes on in your brain, right? It's going on in your brain, and you're looking right. at it, and you're going, "Why the fuck am I thinking like this?" Has there ever been a time where any of your uh, the, these thoughts of territorialness have ever creeped their way in or manifested themselves in your words or actions to these these other people? Um, I, I want to say no, but a part of me, just cause I'm typically shyer around, you know, meeting new folks. Yeah. I wonder if to a degree that manifests itself as almost like a standoffishness, mm. but I, I don't think so. Hmm. 
Well, yeah, man. I think what I, I think I would just uh, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to get your brain to not think thoughts that you don't want it to think. But in the brief moment, I, in the brief moments where you do, it's like lucid dreaming. You know what I mean? Like when you when you when you have that awareness that you're dreaming, and you all of a sudden you can control your dreams. You can kind of do that with your thoughts too. Like you have this awareness that you're acting or thinking in a certain way that you don't like. You can take, you can rein it in, and you can go. You know what? There's there's room in town. For, for multiple cool disabled guys named Hunter. Right. And uh, I know at least where I grew up, because I'm, I'm from Washington State, um, it was a very communal, you know, if I find out other folks with disabilities, like it was, a, it, was a, it was a community thing. We were all, everyone was nice. Everyone was friendly. So it's like there should be no reason that this thought even occurred to begin with, let alone after high school. Alternatively, you could challenge them to a duel, and that would... I don't know if that'd be healthy, but it'd be sick. It would be very, it would be interesting, but I, I feel like I'd get more stuck on the kind of duel, and that would essentially have them, the opponent, go away in boredom, because I feel like I'd get a little too specific. All right, let's say I'm, all right, let's say I roll up to you, and I'm Hunter, and you don't like the sweat of my brow and you don't like my name and you don't like that I'm in a wheelchair and you want to duel me. What, what, how would you, what would the, what would the parameters of the duel be? Oh, I guess uh, first and foremost, I'd imagine I'd have to find, um, of course, something that works for the both of us and both of our ailments. Cause you know, I want this to be a fear duel and not a duel. That. I can simply want because I, while I have some issues walking, I'm still not wheelchair bound yet. So I'd want to make sure to establish some fair ground. But I, I, I ideally that. we'd find something that we both can we can both do to a healthy and skillful enough degree to where it doesn't come off as a one-sided duel. You know, because I, I imagine if we're going to have a duel, you know, it's going to be like an old, old Wild West movie. There's going to be a lot of onlookers. Everyone's coming to the center of town ready to watch watch everything just go down. So I'd, I'd hopefully find something that we're both good enough at so we don't quite embarrass ourselves in front of everyone else. Do you, If you're in a wheelchair, can you ride a horse? You know, I that's a good question. Because I, I mean, me personally, um, I, I've been fortunate enough to where I'm, like I said, only, only recently have I really struggled with walking. And I think that's more from the scoliosis of anything. Mm -hmm. But I do remember seeing this gentleman on TikTok whose sister tends to get him um, a lot of gifts that don't quite fit um, him and his disability. So I know on one of the TikToks, she put her brother on a bike and it just kind of fell over with him on it. That sounds so I uh... imagine with a lot of upper body strength, he'd probably be able to hang on to the horse, but I don't think you'd be able to get a good... I guess like a kick in to push the horse forward, you know? So jousting is out. If you were to... All right, let me... I'll phrase you this before we go. What's your name again? Hunter. Hunter, if you could pick, what would you pick as the as the dueling activity? I'd go for a duel. Well, it's got to be... I feel like there's got to be a spectacle to it for sure. Right, you wouldn't um, just want to do chess. I generally, if if we can put on a bunch of suits of armor and fight with swords or pots of hands, like I, I feel like that'd probably be the way to go. Let me know if you do this because I want to. Um, I want to MC it. I will keep you posted, good sir. Um, Hunter, thanks for talking to me. I hope this conversation was of of any remote kind of sort of minuscule amount of good for you. Um, oh, no, it's fan, uh, it fantastic. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you, Jack. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go, Hunter? Uh, I guess um, I guess I hope everyone else is enjoying themselves, having a nice day, and also if things feel dark, um, things will get better. I've had many on and off in the last two years. Um, you folks can get through it. You all have yourself a nice night. Thank you, Hunter. Take care. Take care. If there are any Lyles out there who would be willing to accept my challenge of um, 
fighting to the death with shotguns? Let me know. Hello? What's your name, partner? My name's Corey. Corey, it says here, you texted me saying, I used to work for Paul Rudd, and now I can't stand the guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude pissing wow. me off. And, all right. You know, so this is the... The tell all. Uh, this is is this the first? This is some re this is some hot goss that you're about to drop on the Therapy Gecko show. I don't know if I want yeah, dude, I signed, TMZ knocking I down my NDA. door, but fuck it. I signed an NDA, but you know enough times passed. I wonder. I wonder if we're okay. I think we're good. Oh, I think the NDA, So I worked on a. I worked on a show with him. Um, the show was called The Shrink Next Door. In my job, I was the production secretary which is a production office position. Basically, you're like the lackeys of the producers. If like the producer wants you to get something done, like hire a vendor to do X. I'm just the guy who communicates with the vendor and gets things done. And we were shooting in Los Angeles. And Paul Rudd lives in New York. He's from New York. He's like a New York guy, right? So... My job, I was assigned the job of helping Paul Rudd find a home in Los Angeles for him to stay for like six months for the duration of the shoot because he wanted like a home home. So I had to, I had to help him find the home home. So what I did was I reached out to realtors and I would get the best properties they had in the budget. I found out what his budget was per month and it's not his money he's spending. Production is paying for him to come out because you know, it kind of makes sense if you're making the guy come live somewhere uh, to shoot. You might as well pay for his home. So his budget was crazy. And this was back in like 2021. So it was like in the middle of the pandemic. So it was tough. I had to like find realtors I could work with. So I had a bunch of properties. I like. So wait, wait, wait. Let me ask property. you. So, let me ask you something. This real. What's your name again? My name's Corey. Corey, I are can you talk for a while? So if I need to speed it up, please. Tell are me. you? Are you sh are you sure you're a well no this is all look here's the thing this is all fascinating information for me but are you sure <laughs> you're allowed to tell us all this <laughs> I think the NDA I signed pertains to the pertains to the content of the product which has already been released so like I couldn't tell I had access to scripts I couldn't tell you before it was released what was in the scripts my guess. Um, okay. All right. This is a good question. Well, I, 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 I guess I I guess I want to make sure that nobody's numbers. gonna. I want to make sure that Paul Rudd's not gonna fucking snipe you <laughs> while you're on the phone with me. Uh, this is a good point. I'll avoid numbers going forward. Paul, I have. If you hear this, I have respect for you and your position. You ticks me off a little bit, but you know. I thought you. Well, I thought you hate. Okay, let's get, let's keep going because I thought you hated the guy. I want to hear about this. Oh, okay. So okay. So he he pissed me off, and then. The same year he pisses me off, he becomes, like, sexiest guy alive. And that's the thing. Like, like he... <laughs> like, the guy's always been popular since he's been a movie star. But then, like, this year he exploded, of course, when he pisses me off. So, like... Why, why, did, he, why did he piss you off? Okay, 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 okay. So, like, basically I had to do, like... My whole job transitioned from being a production secretary to being Paul Rudd's realtor, basically. Finding him, I was in contact with multiple realtors, multiple properties, sending him the properties, making spreadsheets. And I finally, like, narrowed it down to, like, four properties. I, I went to 12 properties. I, he wanted me to be a videographer for him, video all the properties, edit the videos down to, like, four-minute synopsises and narrate. So, like, this was my whole job. It was fun. finally Paul read a home for two weeks. And he needed to move in. I had two weeks to find the home, and he needed to move in in two weeks. Like, things needed to move. And this was hard. Um, so the work was laborious, difficult, and frustrating, and the communication from him was very poor. And like we get close to locking in one place, and like I thought we had it, and then all of a sudden he's like, "I don't like the vibe at this place, so we're changing it up." So we changed it up, and I was like, "I was a good sport. I was a good sport." I find a, I find a place. It's Gerard Butler's home. Uh, I might be sharing too much again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Are you are you sure are you sure you all right, whatever man yeah. <laughs> we'll go with it we'll go with it um, Lord Paul I'm sorry I you know we're good uh, but moving forward yeah we get Gerard Butler's home I do video tours of, with it um, 
we we settle on it. Good, done, deal, deal is signed. And then all of a sudden, he's like, "Wait, Corey, are you free for more work?" I was like, "Okay, okay I think I should probably get back to the production stuff." But you know, it's Paul Rudd. I'll, I'll do I'll do what he wants me to do. He's like, "Can you make me a home gym in Gerard Butler's home?" And this is like again at the start of the pandemic context. It's in Los Angeles. Like everyone's trying to make a home gym right now because no one wants to go to the gym. So like, are you? So this, this is gym. this 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 making a home gym. Is this like an extra thing on top of what you already get paid from the production? No, I would still be doing, be doing a production secretary, but I'm hired by a production company that is making something that Paul Rudd is an executive producer for. So, in the structure of things, like I kind of work for Paul Rudd. Right, this is assist, right. like his assistant should be doing this job, but because in an indirect way I work for him, and his assistant already does enough things, he decided I was the guy. Right. And I already made a, I may already made a house appear for him, so he's like, "Here, this guy can do another thing." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I get the guy at home gym. Um. But it was like the hardest thing. I did like assemble it from like four different rental vendors, and I finally get it all set up. I hire movers. Uh, the costs were exorbitant. Like everyone realized, the home gym equipment was so valuable right now. So like prices were so high. So like, I have to hire movers to come move the things in. I have to install a new floor in Gerard Butler's home to protect the antique floor. Just like rich people problems. So like, there's some maybe class resentment here too, um, where I'm like solving rich people problems and getting paid pennies to to do it. Um, so then it's all done, right? So it's all set up. The home gym set up, put my heart and soul into it. I was actually excited to do it for him. And then I FaceTime him. <laughs> I FaceTime him. And I'm like, here's the moment. You're going to show off the house. You're going to show off the home gym. You said all this love and labor you put into it. And you FaceTime him. And I will say he's a very nice guy. And it's like the kind of nice where it's like, it almost hurts it's so nice. Where it's like he's killing you with kindness. So everything he says. Everything he says, you can't be mad about because he's, his tone is so sweet. Um, but I show him the room, and he's like, oh, Corey, great job. But, um, you know, I really I really prefer to do my workouts clockwise around the room. I like to go from station to station doing my workout, right? So I need you to, to rearrange the room. So I can do that. And like the movers just left. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. He likes, so he this wants was... to have the machine. So he wants the machines set up so that he, <laughs> he rotates through them clockwise. Yeah. So I, he, okay. Uh, <laughs> That's I'm guessing fucking this is crazy. Marvel. I'm, I'm going to give him some empathy here. This is Marvel time. So he's got like, ant-man workout routines he's got to do yeah that's right? you know what so, you know what you know what you're you know what all right if we're giving if we're giving credit to paul rudd on a few things it's a he looks good uh, i'd say i hear i'll give i'll give this to paul rudd a if marvel is like paying for me to do whatever i want i'm ringing that tab up i'm ringing that tab up so that, what, <laughs> if it's marvel's money i'm like this i'm um, this is like if Disney <laughs> is paying for you, I'm like, yeah. Let me just, you know, this is infinite money. So I get him on that. Yeah. And then I get, I get, I, I guess agree. you're right. I guess if you're like a big fucking movie star, like you know, your whole thing is. Uh... Although, who really gives a shit about the physique of Ant Man? Can't he just be like skinny? Isn't that the whole <laughs> thing? It's like he's. I don't four. know. They blow. Him, they, they blow him up pretty big when he goes. Into, I don't know what it's called when he goes into big Ant Man form. He's pretty big. He's big on the screen. You know, you gotta look good for that shot. Sure. I reckon. Sure. I don't know. So he so he wants to do he wanted to do the workouts clockwise, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I had to like not double my budget for the whole space, but I had to like hire movers to come back and it took like three or four of them because it's heavy gear and like again more considerations with the space being like a classic historical house. Uh so it just like the budget went up like crazy again and my my pay didn't Again, it's class resentment. That's the that's the truth of it here. He was very sweet about it, but I, I had it all sorted out. So all of it was sorted out, and this kind of fueled my desire to fucking want to leave the type of work I was doing. Here's the thing: you'll pr you'll probably never work in the film industry again. But it's a good thing <laughs> because, as you know better than I do, it's a terrible place to work. Yeah, yeah. For Go sure. ahead. What were you gonna say? I. I mean, yeah, I've been abused since I got out here. 
my first job that I worked on was Barry and the fucking props guy was like emotionally manipulative and abusive. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had, a sh I've had a shit experience in the film industry. So I used to, and, and um, I've never had, I've never had any, there's, I've, there, I've never had anyone like that I would write an expose about or anything like that, but, um, you know, yeah, I mean, people, people are, people are definitely crazy. This, I once had a guy, um, well, you're telling me about all this, like, the, it, it's, I'm thinking about this because you're telling me about like, oh, I, I was, I thought I was going to be like on the set of Marvel movies and now I'm like helping a guy build a home gym. I was once yeah. a PA on, um, a show as a PA <clears throat> and, um, the executive producer of the, uh, shoot had this like van that he wanted to deck out so he basically just had me oh. like drive the van all around <laughs> atlanta like going to various home depots like getting supplies for a van that i'm pretty sure had nothing to do with the show but he just you know i was kind of his bitch so i so i so i did it but you know yeah. those are I, I guess those are the kind of i don't know i guess I guess that's what you do, all right? As you're you're kind of a bitch for a while, and then eventually yeah. you work your way up to having somebody else build your home gym, maybe. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I, I feel like it doesn't work out like that for ninety five percent of the people in the business. They that's usually true. Get, like, yeah. Burnt out and then leave. But yeah. my perspective, my healthy. I get, I'm like twenty seven now, so I've got a healthy perspective on this. It's I, you know, ate shit for a while and didn't get paid a lot. But I have some cool stories from it, and I think I grew and got some good experiences that helped me be a better person from it, at the very best. But I didn't, get, I didn't, I didn't tell you the uh, the worst part of the Paul Rudd story. So he had me do all these, jump through all these hurdles, um, and then I left the show because I was so sick of it. Um, that was like one of the one of the breaking points for me. Um, and then the other breaking point where I was like, the producers made a bunch of decisions that were like anti-worker, and I had to be the mouthpiece and tell like spread the news to the crew about all the shitty oh, things no. like the producers didn't want to say anything so they had me say everything so then i like would take <laughs> like violate union rules i would just share information in the ways that like i had to tell the crew members that they weren't going to get hotels when we were doing travel shoots like i had to be that guy sharing information that was like the crew would hate me for so then they all like call me screaming at like 2 a.m in the morning about how I'm, I personally am violating union rules by following the orders of the producers. So I just like quit. I left that show. Um, but I heard, so I left the show halfway through. Four months later, I checked in with Paul Rudd's assistant because I wanted, I was curious. I had a morbid curiosity. I was like, did he, did he ever use the home gym? And the personal assistant said, I can guarantee you, he never used the home gym once. Ah, so all, of course he didn't. All of this, all of this for that. Um, yeah. Well. So so then, then a few months later, he got sexiest man of the year, I think. So then, yeah, I, I got super mad then. All all damn. This. You know, because right, because here's the thing: is at least you know if he had used the home gym, at least you could have been like, I had, I played my little part in him achieving yeah. his sexiness, but he didn't use the you home gym. Um, I, so I got some frustrations. But, well, know, that's cool. Know. That's a bet. That's honestly, that's a better story than I thought it would be. I thought you were gonna say he hit you or some shit. Oh no, he's a good guy, and it fucking sucks. Sorry, I can't. Can I swear? <laughs> I don't know. I swear. <laughs> um, you you're totally allowed to uh, uh, discuss the financial um, uh, <laughs> details of of people that you've signed NDAs to not talk about. But no, you cannot uh, say fuck. All right. Well, I'm already. On my way out of the business, anyways, might as well. Here's the thing, though, is lawsuit. and I, 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 we're getting like inside baseball or whatever, but it's all, it's like, you know, it used to be that you had to, right? You had to go and, um, be a PA and like be someone's bitch, and then eventually you just be a bitch for a while, and like, right, 5% of the people who are lucky, if even that, they get to go make a movie. But you don't really, you don't have to do that anymore because now you can just make a movie and put it on the internet and do shit that That's way. That's so true. You know, Dude, I you did a little bit of, of, you know, I, I spent a lot of time as an intern, um, you know, being people's bitch. Um, but then most of, you know, whatever I've got came from the internet. So it's a little, a little bit of both doesn't hurt. Yeah. No, it's so true. 
Um, yeah. What What's next well, for you? Listening to myself. Are you wait? What's wait, wait, What's I'm. Um, what are you gonna go into now if you're not? What's 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 well, next for you? Currently, I'm a cinema lens technician, and that was going great until the strike. So my my whole life in the film industry has been like getting shit on uh, by COVID, and then now the strikes. And I support striking workers everywhere, uh, but that doesn't mean I'm not impacted by it. And I'm not in any union, so I don't really get strike funds or union protections. So I'm kind of Business isn't great right now. I work for a rental company, a camera rental company. And, you know, shout out to B City. It's a really great company. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think I want to go into like real estate photography, honestly. I've always been passionate about cameras and I have done a lot of photography in the past, but never like architectural or real estate. And, you know, I, I don't know if I can make some money off the back of some realtors selling investment properties um that feels like a more ethical way to go about an industry that's actually proven to make people money i guess i don't know i'm still working it out but i i I do have to say i do have to say this and i think you understand this as well you know say what you will about paul rudd and your experience with him but it it sounds like he awakened within you this desire to do real estate photography yeah, definitely. He he pissed me off enough to to make me reject his fucking Kool Aid, Paul Rudd. Wait, but isn't he? He's the one who he he told you he was like, I need you to make these short films of each room in the house. Yeah. Oh, dude, he got. Oh, wait. Oh, I see your point. I was doing real estate videography and photography for him. Right. And he is the impetus. Ah. Okay. So now, now I'm supposed to like worship him, huh? I should be, I should be thanking him. Exactly, exactly. Damn it! This What's that one? I'm, I'm trying to think of what was the one. I don't think I've ever seen Ant Man. Actually, have you? Yeah, I've seen one and two. There's a third one, but that one looked crazy, so I checked out. Are you like? Are you not you- gonna w- watch any uh, uh, Paul Rudd movies anymore? No, I just watched I Love You, Man, the other day, and it was really good. Yeah. So, you know, he pissed me off. He got Sexiest Man Alive. But, you know, he still has a place in my heart. Uh, he could he could probably hit me, and I would still watch his movies. <sighs> yeah. I don't know where the line is. He hasn't crossed it yet, but there'll be something. Wait. Uh, I'm not going to bring up. Israel Palestine, but I think he made some comments recently. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> just so, just one last ditch effort to get something in on him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, bro, what's your name that. again? My name's Corey. Corey, you're a cool guy, man. I hope. Uh, I hope you you whatever thing you get out of or into that you. Uh, find find success and, and peace in it thanks lyle i i don't i don't know you you don't know me but you know i like you a lot you're a great guy you do good things i hope you're taking care of yourself because i think you are taking good care of everybody that you talk to i'm, uh, I'm, I, I'm trying I, my best to do whatever i'm doing <laughs> that's all you can do dude hell yeah well all take right. care man and um good luck sir Sweet dreams. you're the okay. sexiest man alive in my book Hell yeah. Take that, Paul. Later, buddy. Bye. Something tells me I'm going to be hearing from some lawyers sometime soon. Call from Brandon. Hello? Hello? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's going on? Is this Brandon? Yep, this is Brandon. Have we ever spoken before, Brandon? We have not. Oh, beautiful. Well, what's going on, man? Hey, so um, me and my friends are all having a competition to see who can get with the most women before the end of the year mm-hmm. and i am in dead last uh what was the what was the impetus of this competition how did this come about uh because um it was kind of just a like a last year we kind of thought we're talking and i was my body count is pretty low and all of those are pretty high and i was like well i guarantee if i really tried to i could get with more women than any of you guys 
Okay, and are you... What does you really trying to, what does that look like? Like, actually, like, going out of my way to pursue, like, uh, like, a like, sexual intimacy with other women. Sure. How, how, uh, how has that endeavor been going for you? Absolutely terrible. Why has it been going terrible? Um, I'm pretty bad at talking to women, to be honest. You're bad at, you're bad at... Talk, you're bad at talking to women. Is that what you said? Yeah, that's, yeah it's not my, it's not my strong. Suit. Okay. What are you? Are you? Um, are you on Tinder? Or are you? Are you? What are you doing? It's, like a, it's just like an in-person thing. We kind of just go to parties, and kind of just my thing. How old are you? Um, twenty-two. All right. Uh, are you in college? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, hmm. I mean, what's your, what's your, like, is this, is this an endeavor coming to you because of uh, social pressure or loneliness or uh, therapy, sexual therapy. frustration? Therapy. Like what, what is, is, what is the true uh, motivation behind this quest? Um, to get pussy. I'm not going to lie to you. Right, but the, the whole I, getting pussy, there's there's still a motivation behind that, I think. Yeah. And again, and you and look, the motivation behind that could just be, he it could look if your truth is that the motivation behind that is is hedonistic, then that's fine. Yeah. But I just want to know what you know, what is your, the motivation behind getting pussy? Um, to, I think it's to prove something to myself. There we go. All right, that's what I'm. <laughs> that's what we're getting at. Hey, there's you, what you, can I, Yeah. Can I put the phone up for one minute? I'm selling a graphics card for a lot of money, and it's going to help You're me. You're selling so. a graphics card for a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. Like, are you are you giving this, up? I, are you I, giving up video games in a in an in, a, in an attempt to be more attractive to the opposite sex? <laughs> I think so. To be honest. Okay. Um, how long is it going to take you to sell this graphics card? One minute max. All right, you can put me on hold. Oh but I'm going to say Thank a bunch. Of, I'm going to say a lot of mean things about you while while you're that's, selling this graphics card. That's okay with me. All right. Give me give me one minute, please and thank you. This guy sounds like he smells bad. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know who he is at all. Awesome. Okay. I really want to hang up on him, but I'm I'm fascinated by this plight. I actually don't really want to hang up on him. I'm fascinated by his plight, and I would oh. like to hear more. Wouldn't it be funny if this guy killed him? Like it was just a Craigslist serial killer guy? I never understood, um, like, Mercury or... Craigslist or Facebook, like the whole like meeting up with strangers to sell stuff. Like why don't you just buy, do, do the internet? Although I guess that's kind of what this guy is all about. He's like on Tinder and meeting up with strangers anyway. So whether it's for you know romantic sexual interest or to sell a graphics card, I guess I guess this guy is meeting up with strangers. Oh, it's been more than a minute. I don't know if I have any more ranting within me. <laughs> you don't have time to jo call her. You don't have time to joke around. You got to get back on the fucking phone. I don't want to hear you laughing. This guy's yucking it up. I'm on hold. Listen to this guy yuck it up with the Craigslist killer. This is what I'm coming from. What are you doing? All right. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm all right. Back. You're back. There we go. All right. I was about to. All right. All right. Sorry about I that. Actually was, I actually wasn't about to do anything. I was, I'm in a pretty patient. Okay. I heard, I heard my name. No, like, oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. You were, you right. were yucking it. You were making jokes. I, I know. I know. You I were, hit, you were, you're hitting on anyone that moves. You were hitting on the person you were selling the graphics card right. to. 
<laughs> it was a it was a little Asian guy. Why not? Jesus Christ, man! All right. Well, okay, um... okay, okay, okay. So let me let me, so okay. So the whole thing is that I have two bodies, and all my friends are like mid twenties, thirties, and it's kind of like a it's kind of like a thing they like put me down. It's you know, I it was kind of just to prove something to myself that I could, not so much prove it to them. All right. So. What I mean, what exactly are you trying to prove to yourself here? Because, because you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'll tell you this. I've been there. I've been like, you know, I remember when I was in high school. I was like one of the last of my of my friends to yeah. have sex, and mm -hmm. you know, I that, I remember that making me, you know. Right, feel in that way, like you needed to prove something, like, you know, I needed to prove something to myself, or, um, you know, it made me, you know, feel lesser than, and whatnot, you know, so I, I, I understand what, where this is coming from, but when you, when, what, what it, can you go in more on what you mean when you say you're trying to prove something to yourself? So, I think it's just, like, trying to give myself some type of worth. I, I, I don't, I don't know if that's the right word for it. Mm -hmm. Sure. It's like try, um, I'm trying to prove something to myself, but just when you keep kind of failing, it's kind of like it's like I'm starting to get the feeling that like this doesn't really matter in a way. You know, I think um, I've l I actually, you know, I rem I remember having several moments where I like learned this lesson in real time, uh, especially when it comes to like the the pursuit of of sex, you know. Yeah. And it's like I I, I remember in college I remember I, I was like you're the a number like a number of girls that you've slept with. I'm telling you yeah. right now, it's not going to. It is not a long lasting solution to uh, any sort of lack of self esteem or self worth. You know, I think that, I think that's more what it is. Is like I, I'm a I'm a pretty good looking guy. Like I, I'll say it like right. not like hockey way, but it's just I just don't know how to use my words. Like I get nervous. You know, you see a pretty little Latina girl standing there and you just get nervous. You got to stop with the race thing. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> if Just stop. Just stop doing that. Just stop. I don't know what you're... I, I can already kind of tell why the words aren't working. You got to stop doing that. I Look, okay. I, don't th I don't think you're a bad guy and I understand where you're coming from, but you got to stop doing that. Okay. Absolutely. Um, okay. Where were we? Um, what, what, uh, tell me, tell me in your, in your life in general, do you feel like you have a low kind of self-worth? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay. I really, I, like I grew up, like I was in and out of foster care as a kid and it was, it just, I, I, I feel like that kind of was the start of it. Like no self-worth. Mm-hmm. Like, um. Hmm. Okay. All right. So this is like. I mean, this is. We're in real therapy territory. This is like a, yeah. an issue that stems from your childhood. Y yes. The, you know, my parents. Like, I can't really blame them. They were like, they were mid high school, and like back then, like abortion wasn't really a like a feasible option. Mm hmm. So they're kind of so you, you had you had teenage parents. Yeah. Yep. That's rough. Yeah. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever gone to real therapy to talk about this? No. Okay. Well, look, I'm um, I'm just a dumbass in a gecko costume. <laughs> who I'm gonna be. I'm a little high right now too. Um, oh yeah. Which I'm not normally. And I, I I regret just now admitting it, but I'm trying to be more myself. So I I'm mm. gonna be honest with you. But you should, if you have the opportunity to, you should go and talk to someone because it sounds like there's some d deeper rooted issues. Uh, if if we can, I think establish something 
from just us talking right now, uh, it, hmm. anything, I hope it is that you understand. I mean, you you yeah. clearly understand this because you're talking to me about it, and I didn't even have to, you know, dive too deep into you for you to say something. Is that yeah. whatever is going on with you in, in terms of this lack of confidence or self esteem? It's something yeah. deeper that you're not going to solve by you know going and 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 fucking a bunch of different people. So yeah, think- for that, so then for you to then get sad about the fact that you're not fucking a bunch of people and have that be, uh, you know, limiting and have that be like a, a hit to your self esteem is I mean, why are you? It's like it's like it's meaningless because it's not even the mm-hmm. thing that is causing your low self-esteem does that are you following me does that make sense yeah yeah so i mean it's not even the fact that like they don't necessarily want to sleep with me it's like i think i get more of like a thrive off of just the interaction itself yeah like just no just you, the- you that's i know I, I know you you are you saying you get a thrive you thrive off of like just this idea you know not even like you know um like sleeping with someone but just this idea that like somebody would want to sleep with you yes. like that makes yes. you feel attractive yes yes right. yes. yes yeah yes. i think i feel like that's a feeling that you know um is uh, all people chase i don't even i don't think that's a gender thing even i feel like yeah. every, everyone it's a common thing that people people want to feel liked they want to feel attractive so yeah you know, I, um but but that goes that goes back to why like why do you feel like you um, need that? So every single relationship I've been a part of, I've been cheated on, mm-hmm. and it's you know it's just like like obviously they don't like me or they don't want me or so it's like just just to get out there and get that feeling of. Um, not love but like just attraction right like i don't want to go into like a new relationship because that just it just opens up scars and then you can i'd rather just get that little bit get that little bit here and there to keep me going without having to jump into a a whole something new Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that but then you know and then but i'm not i'm not sleeping with these women so then it's like this whole trade that me and a couple of friends are doing is just it's not working out in my favor like for the quote-unquote game but it's like it's feet it's feeding me a little bit I, but then- i think i i also and this is a whole other thing that i want to i have other things i kind of want to talk about with this first but i i think it's this is a, it's a mistake to gamify this mm-hmm. i think it's a mistake to gamify this because that's not that's not the game you want to be playing because for well for well, for for a lot of reasons one um i don't, I don't know if uh you, this competition is something you want to brag to other people about that's one but two it's like um uh the, the games you want to play are are going to be games with yourself not games mm-hmm. with like oh how many you know girls can I sleep with or how much, you know, external, um, you know, uh, uh, positive feedback can I get that will, that will fill up my cup. And it's, it's weird. I'm thinking about it right now. I'm thinking about it right now because, um, yeah, when you get that, that uh, positive feedback and you, it's sort of like, um, it's like a quick fix. It's like eating fast food. Or something like that. It makes you feel really good in the moment, but it's not a it's not a great long term, uh, you know, play because you still yeah. at the end of the day, whether if you're not you know comfortable with yourself, then you're fucked. No 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 amount of you you know no amount of 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 Tinder hookups is gonna to make you feel comfortable with yourself. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the game I'm playing is just making it worse too. You know, if you get denied, and then it's like, oh, like the self worth drops again. But like, the talking brings it back up, and then you get shot down. You know what? Uh, what's your name again? 
Brandon. What else do you do with your life, Brandon? Um, I work. I work. Um, I do. I design 3D. I 3D print a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm kind of like a closeted nerd. Mm -hmm. but, um, um, can I? All right. Can I ask you this then? Um, and I'm, you know. I'm trying to – I don't want – I feel like – I. by the way, I just got to like snap out of it for a second. I feel like I've been going real hard therapy mode on No, I'm enjoying just talking this to call. you. Um, hmm. what, what aspects of yourself do you feel at unsettled with, let's say? Um, uh, I don't like wearing shorts because I have cankles. I'm not fat. I just – I just have cankles. I just have really thick thighs, uh, or like ankles. I don't know. Why. Um, I wear glasses. Like my hairline's starting to fade back a little bit, but it's not. It's nothing like you can't really look past. You know what I mean? Mm. You can still look in the mirror and be like, "All right, I still look good." But um, you know, I'm gonna. This I used to talk about this on the stream more. Um, I haven't read it in a long time, but I read this book a little while ago. It's it's by a guy named Mark Manson, who wrote okay. he he wrote this other book that was like super popular called the the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Um, oh, I remember. Yeah, I remember you bringing that up. In yeah, I've talked about this this yeah. before. Yep. He wrote this other book that uh, I thought was really interesting called Models. Um, okay, that's ba it's like it's sort of a dating book. And the, the thesis of it, I really like the thesis of it, which is basically like, you know, it's not about um, what a game or like how to say the right thing or anything like that. It's more about like, uh, how, do, how do you like for, before anything, how do you make yourself into a person where you like yourself and you like who you are and you like your life and you're living you know, honest to yourself, and then how do you honestly project that out into the world? And the the idea that if you do those things, you know, you just you just become a more naturally attractive person, which I think is a, is an interesting thing. To and who is who is that book by again? A guy named Mark Manson. Okay. Um. Hmm. What do, what do you do for work again? You just told me, but I forgot. Oh, I don't think I told you. Um, I work for a recycling company. I operate okay. um, an appliance crusher, so I just crush appliances all day. That sounds With awesome. It, that it, sounds it, it like is. it would give me all the sexual um, pleasure that I would need. Oh, dude, it's it's cool. It gets, it's it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Um, are you, is this like kind of the only aspect of your life that you're feeling unhappy with is, is kind of the, the romantic sexual sphere of, of humanity? Um, yeah, at the moment, at the moment right now. Yeah. I would, I would say that's kind of my, my big thing, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I find a lot of joy in a lot of things. Good. Good. Keep doing that. I don't know. That's a it's a hard it's 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 in it's in general, um for, for 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 men and women really hard to navigate that that spectrum of life and um I myself am pretty fucking terrible at it so um, yeah I don't know but um photography is fun it's really fun to take pictures of stuff like what's the last thing you took a picture of. Oh, uh, the Chicago skyline. I was, um, I've been listening to, I listened to that song by Kanye West, Homecoming. You know that one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know that one. It's a sick song. It's about Chicago. Yeah. 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 I live like 30 minutes from where, uh, from where Ye was. I feel like since I'm Jewish, I, I'm allowed to listen to Kanye West. Is that fair? I think everyone should listen to Kanye West. <laughs> you just, you just keep, you you just keep, uh, you just keep raising those flags, my friends. I know. No, I, um, I like Kanye. I try not to like pay attention to the media too much. You never know. Do you? You sound like um, 
You're, are you like in the, I don't know, the, I don't know what you would call it, the, 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 the dark web of the internet, whatever they call that? Um, if you mean Reddit, then yeah. Um, look, go, I don't know, lift some weights, stop referring to people by their race. Okay, uh, okay. Go, go try to talk to some people. Eat a sandwich. Lyle, Live I, your life. I, I got a question for you. Uh, I might answer it. What is it? What was it like meeting Eric Andre? It was cool. He's a cool guy, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. Oh, my. Yeah, it was it was a lot different. The podcast with Eric was a lot different than what I thought it was going to be. What did you think it was going to be? Um... Like how you guys talked about, like, portraying yourself, how you portray yourself, like, you know, when he's going around the city, putting his tongue in people's mouths, going, burnt up, you know, I was, it was weird. It was like seeing a whole different side of him. Like, um, it's true. It was, it's true. I was, <laughs> it was kind of, there was a funny moment where um, I handed, like, we take, we use AirPods to, um, yeah. like, listen to the calls and stuff. And so I handed him <laughs> a set of AirPods and he yeah. he he was like, "Are these clean?" And I said to him, "I was like, I was I well I wasn't expecting him to ask me that because I I have seen him um, you know, put his fingers in several strangers' mouths. But um, the way he the way he described it was that he's he's only um, you know, he he's a totally totally different guy when he's performing than oh, when yeah. he's living his normal mm-hmm. life. But he he was a cool guy. I'm glad I'm I'm very appreciative of him for doing the podcast. Yeah, that um, was that was. I was, um, oh, and, and Danny Brown. You had Danny Brown on the podcast, didn't you? Yeah. Hey, I got a question for you. What's it like being friends with, uh, Devin? Devin. I took a wild guess that one of your friends' names was Devin. No, I I don't have any friends. That's not true. You have these weird friends that you're making this bet with. Who are these friends, by the way? Um, I got my boy, I got my boy Carson and I got my boy Dylan, um, friends since childhood. Okay. Are they good guys? Are you friends with them? Do you like them? Absolutely. Yeah. Day one, day one homies. That's, that's the most important thing in life, I think, is to have good friends. Some, someone that, you know, you have, you can lean on a little bit. Well, Brandon, um, was this conversation remotely helpful for you? Lyle, just hearing your voice made it all worth it. And yeah, it was it was it was helpful. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, um, stop buying Kia Souls and Ford Explorers because you look like cops. Um, you should, what you, uh, my last piece of advice is that you should take more walks in the park than you do looking at car facts on Reddit. <laughs> maybe that will make you, uh, I don't know, maybe that'll improve your life somehow. Anyway, nah, that was a douchey thing to say. Um, take care, man. Thanks for calling. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, Lyle. Have a great night. You too. Bye. I feel like I, I feel like that guy. I feel like nothing that I said to that guy got was he listened to. I've been that guy. I've been in college, being like, "Oh, I need to have sex with people so that I can feel good about myself." It's a terrible, terrible pursuit.